Hello YouTube friends. Welcome back to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I want to tell you about a new project that I've started. Now, before you all say, why don't you finish all the ones you've already got on the go? <laughs> I know that I'm not alone on the lime green sofa for being someone who has many projects on the go at once. This project is replacing the hand stitching that this one was behind me. This quilt behind me, which is all hand-pieced hexagons in a whole wash of um, greens and purples and, and blues. This was a, a, a quilt that I started. In fact, I was when I was getting ready to film this, I was thinking, why did I start that quilt again? <laughs> and I remember when Agnes, my granddaughter, was due, I was a bit distracted and a little bit on edge and I thought I've got to do something to keep myself nice and calm and like I always say you get into your hands you get out of your head. So I started stitching her hexagons with no real thought about what I would do with them and it became this. Now I've started the hand quilting of this uh, which I'm really really enjoying doing so every now and then I'll get it off the board put it on the table and do some hand stitching but I'm very much missing the um, the piecing part, the putting the you know the making the templates, the uh, putting the fabric on the templates and piecing those together. So I've chosen my next uh, hand pieced project. I was wandering around Pinterest like you do. You know how you say uh, I'll just spend ten minutes on Pinterest, and three hours later you're still there. Do you do that? Pinterest. It's a big, big time waster, but you can also find some really, really, really interesting and useful things. And so I was looking at all sorts. There was one uh, that uh, was a hand pieced one that made a beautiful star shape. And I really liked that one. But then I kept coming back to this one, which is called the plus quilt. And I'll leave all the details to where I found this in the show notes below. But it was a website, uh, not a, a website. Yeah, it was a blog. Uh, by Wild Olive. So this is Molly Johansson. That's who's uh, that's who's designed this. Uh, and maybe there are other ones out and about there, but this is the one that I hit on. And when I looked at the samples that she'd put on to Pinterest, they were all very um, subtle, very nice, beautiful shades of of uh, of colour, all coming together in a nice subtle way. Now. If you've been here any length of time, you'll know that the word subtle is not something you can apply to me. And I have, I make no apologies for that. I love things to be bold and bright and colourful. And I brought back from the Festival of Quilts a K facet jelly roll. I've opened it up, but it's here in all its glory. I've got my box here with all my bits and pieces in. And it was this one here. I'm trying to keep them nice and neat so that I can find them easily. But here they are, look, these beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous, bright colours. And then underneath here, uh, let me just put that over that side. So those are the, the K-Facet jelly rolls there, the Free Spirit jelly roll. And then here I've got some Moda solids uh, in all different colours. There's a bit more of the jelly roll there. And I've got um, my Moda solids in every colour of the rainbow here. And I have another jelly roll of the blues if I need any blues from pale right through to dark. And I had a green one. Where's that one? Is that in here as well? Yeah. So this jelly roll here. So I've had these for years sitting in my drawers over there and I thought, why am I saving these again? So this was the time to open them and get them uh, get them used. So I've got all these beautiful greens, all these amazing blues. And then I had a sort of rainbow colours uh, of uh, Moda uh, solids. And these jelly rolls are a perfect uh, size, this two and a half inch strip to make this particular block. Now, let me show you. Um, what they look like. I've got them down here. So it's called the plus quilt and that is a plus. 
and then coming in underneath that or on top of that or whatever sits a coloured, a colourful one so that what you've then got is, um, well this is the way I'm choosing to do it. I'm making lots of these and lots of these in all the colours of the rainbow and let me just show you how I'm putting this together. I've got one of my little project boards that I really like to use. It's just a piece of polystyrene with a piece of scrap of wadding on the pin to the outside of it. They're very, um, I've got three or four of these lying around the place and they're really handy to have to, to carry around, to carry projects around. So I've, from my two and a half inch strip, I've cut four of these little shapes here that I'm calling beach huts because they look a lot like beach huts all lined up don't they and I'm cutting those and storing those on here and the template which um, the website uh, Wild Olive Molly Hewenson very very kindly gives this free template which, and I've printed out uh, six or seven of these and the way that I'm cutting my templates because I think I might have said this before when you're doing English paper piecing everything hangs on how accurate your templates are if these are a little bit off now then um, these four edges won't come together and so you really do need accuracy so the way that I'm doing that I've got some this is not copy paper this is a probably 100 or 120 gram paper which I bought specially for the purpose and I've got six of those and I I line this up with six sheets sellotape it down to my cutting mat and then I cut it out with a steel ruler and a modeling knife now it's tricky it's uh, it's not it's you have to concentrate and it's not the easiest task in the world but it's not impossible to do and when you cut it like that through several pieces of copy paper you end up with a little box like this full of the templates that you need there they are little beach huts <laughs> and they get then they get sewn onto here we are I've got some on the go here so this is a little set of orange ones that I'm doing. So I'm stitching them onto, onto the paper. And when there are four like that, so that one still needs to be done. But when there are four like that, then I'm pinning them together with a little um, binding clip like that, which I have loads of. And then they're all sitting in this bowl here. So in this bowl, I have some beach huts <laughs> waiting to go. I have my paper templates and I have the clips to clip them together when they're all done. So that's the stages. Once I've got the papers and I've got the shapes cut from my fabric, um, it, it doesn't quite fit. Let me show you on this beautiful one here. The template doesn't quite fit comfortably enough. It's a little bit skimpy if you put it on sideways like that. So I cut it this way and just say, well, we'll have a tiny bit more waste. And I cut it that way. One, two, and then there's four pieces there ready to sew together. And so this project then is going to take me a long time. I mean, this is this project's not quite finished yet. And my granddaughter Agnes is about to be three. So I don't know how long this one's going to take. I have an idea in my head that it will be all the colours of the rainbow. Everything, right? I've got a lot of red ones and orange ones put together at the moment. And, and I've been playing around with how they look. But I would like it to wash through to greens and blues and purples and all those colours in this really kind of bold um, way with the crosses. Where's a plain one? Here's a plain one. There we go. So we get those coming together like that. I'm at the very beginning of this, so I can't really show you any more than just the basic pieces. 
Look, here's another green one that I did here, which might go best with this green here. It's very exciting at the beginning of a project like this one, wondering where it might take you. I guess that was the feeling I had when I started this one, when maybe it was just going to be a little cot cover uh, for the newborn baby. And now she's walking around and uh, having opinions <laughs> about things and she's nearly three and uh, she's um, an absolute delight. And this cover here will be brilliant for her when she's in an ordinary sized bed. This one, I've got a feeling I might be making this one for me, in which case it'll be a really big one that goes down the sides of the bed. I like big quilts. And so I thought I would introduce you to this pattern that I'm making. Thank um, Molly very much indeed for sharing this freely given pattern with us all on Pinterest. Um, and I'd just like to say, watch this space because of this one is going to, you're going to see this on and off exactly like with this one. Every now and then I would get it out and sit and chat with you and do a few more hexagons while I'm going to do a few more beach huts and little pluses. So that's all I wanted to say. Ah, except to say I've decided only to use Free Spirit, K Facet, Brandon Mabley and Philip Jacobs fabric and the Moda solids will be every colour of the rainbow but these guys are all going to be from those ranges. So many to choose from, so many and so there's a jelly roll and there's bits and pieces that I've got that I've collected over the years that are just well they're in a box down here by my feet and so I just keep helping myself to those. Um, so I've got a box down here that's got a few more in here and a few more and so as I sit in the evening watching something or other on the telly uh, I can put these few together. Do you like it? I think it's going to look startling, I really do. And I think it would look brilliant if you were to make it in subtle colours and maybe use just a, like a wash of grey and a few little pinks coming in. That would look gorgeous too. I think another thing that would look really, really great is if you were to, let me see if I can find one that I've intentionally done. I haven't fussy cut any of these except maybe the odd one. I fussy cut that one and so you can see that it's got the uh, the spots in the middle, pink ones and the blue ones on the outside. I think this would look fantastic if you were to decide to fussy cut them. I decided right from the start that I wouldn't do that except for when it's so obviously uh, easy to do. I decided that I would um, just cut them from that one fabric for each one of the pluses. Watch this space then, that's all I'll say about that. It's going to be um, a project that goes on and on and on for a long time. I'll come back to it. I'll, I'll make a playlist. I think I have an English paper piecing playlist that we'll leave on the end card, but I'll, um, I'll make a playlist about the plus quilt as well, so that if you wanted to keep up with the progress of that one, you could. So I'm just going to cut some more of these now because I'm getting a bit low on these. And then I'm going to just sew these whenever I feel like it. I'll put this opened up jelly roll back in here. I'm trying to keep them nice and tidy. But you know, don't you, as soon as you open a jelly roll, that's it. It's never going to look tidy ever again. And so this is the box I'm working from here. Uh, this is the work in progress here, finished ones here. And then when the quilt's off the table, I'll put them up and see how they look. I'm going to cut some more of these now.
last video I did about English paper piecing, I showed you how to do so the hexagons onto fabric. This is no different. Uh, in fact, it's slightly easier if anything. It's only got four sides. One, two, three, four, five sides. Five sides. And the way that I've decided that it works best is to start with that bit there. That fold that edge there. Um, and I'm a thread baster. We've talked about this before. And I tried it in a few different, starting in a few different places, but that seems to be the best one because then when you come round the corner here, finger press it and just fold it over. So when you've got the last bit left to do, press that with your fingers like so and then do your double like that and then these four bits come together now i guess you could sew them you don't have to sew all the same color together I think it would rather lose the point of the cross if you if you didn't emphasize the cross with the same color. And so this is I'm doing this through my little <laughs> my little light box thing. So I hope you can see okay. So I'm going to do exactly the same uh, as I do when I'm English paper piecing any shape. I'm just going to do very close stitches. I've got a thin needle and what I call my disappearing grey, which you can actually see pretty well on these bold colours, but it still seems to work OK. It's Aurifil 50 I'm using in uh, the grey colour. I've got a huge cone of it and I just use it for everything. Every time I do hand stitching, I use it. And so then I've mentioned before how uh, let me get one, a finished one. What we're trying to avoid is a hole where these edges all come together. That's what we're trying to avoid. And so to that end... Oh, hello, cat. <laughs> Are you coming in here? Careful, there's needles and things around. <laughs> OK, this is not going to be so easy if you want to play. <laughs> So to that end, <laughs> I try to do, uh, come on, Rita, behave yourself. Oh dear. I just give the cat a little bit of attention because otherwise um, we'll not get anything done, will we? Come on, sweetheart. You go down on that chair there. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> so to that end, I was saying, I'm doing two or three stitches at the apex of this little beach hut here. And then when I open that out, it creates a straight line there, relatively straight. And then I sew this one onto here, this one onto here. I'll get back when I've petted Rita a little bit more, when I've got the next one sewn on. So, <laughs> never work with children and animals. Okay, so again, my main focus at the moment is to keep there from being a hole in the middle. I guess when I start connecting two pluses together, there'll be another um, concern about the corners but I haven't got as far as that yet because I want to get a lot of these made before I decide on the final layout. So I think I'm going to be making these for weeks, in fact. Uh, not all, not you know, not all the time, just every now and then when, uh, when the fancy takes me. So we'll get to the end of this one then. And again, a few little overstitches. She's gone outside again now. The back door's open and she just came in to say hello. She's gone out again now. And now I'm at that end there and I want to be here. So I'm going to take one stitch, two stitches, 
three stitches brings me back to the apex again. And when I open this one out, the next one can go in here. Okay. And then tie it off. And there we have an orange one, which might fit quite nicely with that. I don't know. I have to make a lot and then try them all out on the board. But that's how they all fit together. And it's great that I've got so many pieces cut now. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. What that does is it tells YouTube uh, that people are enjoying this video and YouTube recommend it to more people who might not know about The Last Homely House and who might enjoy uh, all the things that I do here. Also, subscribe if you haven't and when you click the notifications bell that means you won't miss a single thing. Now over on Patreon, I've talked about this project over there uh, and so there's always more behind the scenes stuff going on over on Patreon. So you could pop, uh, there'll be a link to the end, on the end card to that. And so uh, thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll catch you next time with something else. Mm -hmm.